Good morning, and it is good that we can gather together. Under the guidelines that are in place now and that are going to continue to be in place, we have no idea how long it will be before we can gather together in person safely. But until we are able to gather together again safely and be in compliance with the guidelines in place, it is good that we can be together in this manner each week. So welcome to our service today. Do have some announcements that I would like to share with you this morning. I uh, would like to let you know that if there is a person who wants to apply for one of the scholarships that we offer as a church, the deadline to apply for one of those scholarships is May 1st, and we can get an application out to you if you have not already submitted one. Bear in mind that it's not for only those persons who are attending a four-year school, but persons attending a trade school and are members of this church are welcome to apply as well. So that is out there. Want to express thank you from the Haney family. Twyla is grateful for all the cards and letters that she has received during her recent hospital stay, and she is glad to be home. But thank you for your care and your support that you have extended to them. <laughs> And then wanted to also remind you that we do currently continue to do our Bless the Badge campaign. And the missions committee continues to reach out and fill those baskets with good food items at the police department, the sheriff's office, and the fire department. So that ministry is continuing. Want to welcome each of those persons that are here this morning. Hopefully Renee can show you on the screen the nice assembly that we have here. You'll see that there is one old boy that brought his horse. <laughs> he was hesitant to leave his horse outside, so we said, yes, you can go ahead and bring your horse into the worship service. And then you'll notice over here on this side, I often refer to the congregation as my flock. Well, we actually have some sheep in our flock today. And so it is good that we have them in our midst. And then there is a couple in the back. And you can see they have corn around them. They truly are outstanding in their field. <laughs> I heard your groans. <laughs> we have a number of birthdays that have been submitted to me by email this past week that I would like to share with you. Bryce Samuelson. Bryce turned two yesterday. So happy birthday to Bryce. And then Luke Hansmeyer turned 19 on the 21st. So happy birthday to Luke. And then uh, on the other end of the spectrum, we have Betty Cooper. Betty Cooper with the K. Betty Cooper is 97 on the 28th, 97 on the 28th, so happy birthday, Betty. And then I would like to extend a special birthday greeting and a shout out to a lady named Jean Ang. Jean lives in Lincoln, Nebraska and watches us. Jean turned 92, or will turn 92 on April 30th, and Jean served as my organist for many years in a previous parish that included Valparaiso United Methodist Church. So, Gene, it is good that you are watching, and happy birthday to you, and thank you for your years of service as an organist. And then I uh, want to also extend birthday greetings to Arlene Dahlgren. Arlene will have a birthday this coming Saturday, May 2nd. So, happy birthday to Arlene. So, happy birthday to each and every one of those individuals, and if you have a birthday you would like me to mention next Sunday, please feel free to email those to me during the week. But email to uh, happy birthday to each and every one of those. Let's begin our time together with a word of prayer. Gracious God, as we assemble together this morning, although we may not be together in person, we give thanks that we can gather together in this way. 
Lord, we ask that you fill this sanctuary with your Holy Spirit. Bless the airways that exist between those of us who are here and those of us who are out there watching. Come to us this morning, Lord. Speak to us, inspire us, encourage us as we continue this journey together. Thank you, Lord, for your presence with us today and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning, the words will appear on your screen. We're going to sing number three, one, zero, He Lives. Carla for leading that song and you all sounded just great out there today so thank you for singing along. For our stewardship time this morning I remind you that we are able to receive your gifts and you'll see on the screen that if you would like to mail your gifts in our mailing address is on the screen before you. Thank you to each and every one of you who are sending your gifts in by mail. We truly need them. We truly appreciate them. You'll see the other option where you can text by way of the technology on your cell phones. And then you can go to our website and also donate there by use of your debit or credit card. So thank you for the gifts that you send. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the gifts that have been received and will be received. Lord, we thank you for the faithfulness of the people who support the ministry of this church. We ask that you bless these givings and the gifts that all might be used to carry on the work begun through your Son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. 
We're going to have a time with young persons this morning. And as the young people gather around the iPads and computers at home, as I wait for them to assemble together, I want to uh, give you a little heads up. At the end of the service today, please don't leave early. Stick around for the duration of the service because at the end of the service we're going to do something a little different today that we will continue to do moving forward and I think you will enjoy it and will want to be a part of it. So uh, please stick around for part of our entire service as we uh, share in the closing together. Well, what have I got in my bag today? I have a picture. And there is a very handsome man wearing number 71 and there is his friend who is wearing number 89 and full disclosure I am the handsome one wearing number 71 the person in the picture with me is my good friend longtime friend and former teammate Pat Hawkinson Always called him Hawk, of course. Hawk and I played football together in high school four years. We played side by side together. And then we went to college together. And we played together four years in college as well, side by side. And in those eight years of playing together, we had a lot of fun. We have a lot of memories of games that we played and experiences that we shared. And I have this picture, and whenever I look at this picture, it reminds me of Hawk. It reminds me of those days when I was younger. And it reminds me of the friendship that Hawk and I have shared for many years. And I was thinking... As I look at this picture, it helps me to remember Hawk, but we have ways to remember how much God loves us. We can look at pictures of Jesus, maybe pictures that artists have drawn of Jesus with children. We have pictures that artists have drawn of Jesus on the cross. And all those pictures that we have can help us to remember how much Jesus loves us. And then we have other ways to remember that Jesus loves us. We have songs that we sing. And when we sing those songs, we remember that we are precious in the eyes of God. And we have prayers that we can share. And we have the Bible that we can read. And all of these are ways that we can be reminded that we are precious to God and how much Jesus loves us. So the next time you look at a picture at home, may it be a reminder to you of the people that are special to you in your life. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for friends. We give you thanks for good memories that we have shared with those friends. And Lord, we thank you for the ways that we are able to remember how much you love us. And Lord, we pray that each day we might be reminded through pictures and songs and the Bible of your care and your presence with us each day. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you to all the young people who participated in the service today. And I hope that you have a good rest of the day. We do have special music this morning. Our special music this morning comes from Hampton, Virginia. Our son, Ryan, who is stationed in the Air Force at Langley Air Force Base, Hampton, Virginia. He is a staff sergeant there, and his primary endeavor is music. And I asked Ryan to prepare to play and sing a special song for us today. And so thanks to technology and thanks to Ryan, here is our special music today, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Ryan?
Hello, Ogallala United Methodist and friends around the world. This is a version of the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, 
marching on, 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 amen. Thank you for the gift of technology that makes that possible, but thank you for sharing that song this morning. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, as we prepare to hear your holy word, we ask that you please open our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Fill us with your presence. Speak to us through your word today and help us to be renewed in our faith through the words that we share this day. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> the lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke in the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priest and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are! And how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. While he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. 
Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God, and all God's people say, Amen. <clears throat> I want to begin today by asking a question. Do you know the words to your high school fight song? Now, I mean the high school that you attended and graduated from. Do you know the words to that high school fight song? And I'm not saying do you recognize the tune that when the band plays it, you can say, oh, that's our high school fight song, and clap along. But do you know the words to your high school fight song, and can you sing them? Now, my buddy Hawk and I and many of our friends, we graduated from high school in South Sioux City, Nebraska. South Sioux City High School. And I still know all the words to my high school fight song. And it goes like this. And don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. But it starts out, keep up the fight, South Sioux High School. And hold the fort for the sport of the game. Try hard to win. Well, you get the gist. But I still know all the words to that high school fight song. And I haven't been in high school for 10 or 12 years or more. Hawk and I sang that song together with some of our friends many times. And then my teammate Hawk and I, we went to college together and played four more years of football together. And in college, our football team had a victory song. It wasn't the school fight song, but it was our football team's victory song. We only sang it after the games that we won, and we sang it a lot, because we won a lot. And that song was called Blood on the Saddle. Yeah, like the saddle that that gentleman wears on that horse that he brings to church with him. Blood on the Saddle. And I still know all the words to that song. It was our victory song that we sang. And so I asked, do you know the words to your high school fight song? Can you sing them? Go ahead. I'd love to hear you. Yeah, you don't seem to know all the words. Our lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke in the 24th chapter. And Luke reminds us of this great event that took place as there were two followers of Jesus who have left Jerusalem and are heading home to Emmaus after the Passover. They are walking along, and it's interesting that when you read this text in Greek, it says that they are discussing together, but when you read the Greek word, it tells us they are discussing intensely, intensely. They are discussing all that has taken place in Jerusalem. Then they are joined by a stranger. The stranger happens to be Jesus, but they are not able to recognize him. And this stranger says to them, what are you talking about as you walk along the road? And they are dumbfounded. Their jaws drop wider open than many of these that are in the pews. And they say to Jesus, who to them is an unknown individual, they say, are you the only person, are you the only person around here that doesn't know what has taken place these last few days in Jerusalem? Jesus said, what things? And then they began to recall for him, they said, well, here's what happened. There was a great and powerful prophet, Jesus of Nazareth. He was great in power and deed, and we, as part of the nation of Israel, we had hoped, we had hoped that he would redeem Israel, that he would restore Israel to a nation of power and might. But 
some of our leaders, they were part and parcel of a plan to have Jesus suffer a mockery of a trial, to be whipped, to be nailed to a cross, and killed. And now it's Sunday. These events all took place on Friday. And now this morning, they said to this stranger, we have heard reports from some women who went to the tomb and they have found that the stone has been rolled away and that the body of Jesus is gone. The stone is there, but the body of Jesus is gone. We believe his body has been stolen. And not only that, but Mary Magdalene, she went to tell the eleven, that core group of apostles. We say eleven because Judas is no longer a part of the group. They say to the stranger, after that, Mary Magdalene went running to the eleven to tell them the news that the stone has been rolled away, the body of Jesus is gone, presumably stolen. And yet, some of the other women that were present, they have shared with us the news that they too saw the empty tomb, and they had a vision of angels. And these angels said to them that Jesus is alive. But no one has seen him. Now, friends, remember with me, we are in that window of time now as these two individuals are walking home to Emmaus. We're in that window of time that after the women have found the tomb to be empty, after Mary has raced to the disciples, the disciples have come back, they have seen the empty tomb. Other women have seen the empty tomb. But it is before before Mary has seen the risen Christ. So we're in that window of time after having found the tomb empty, but before Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. And it was in that time frame that many people began to leave Jerusalem, like these two, and head home. They're headed home to Emmaus. And after they tell Jesus all these things, and to him, he was just a stranger. Luke tells us that Jesus sat down with them. He broke bread with them. And then, through the power and the glory and the mystery of God, their eyes were opened. And they were able to recognize that they were in the presence of the risen Christ. Luke tells us that then, after their eyes are opened, and they have this experience of being in the presence of the risen Christ. They're so excited. Jesus has gone. And these two followers then began to run that seven miles back to Jerusalem. They want to tell the eleven and others what they have seen, what they have experienced. So they leave and they run the seven miles back to Jerusalem. When they get there, they tell the disciples what they have experienced, and the disciples say, oh yes, it's true, he's already been here too. In the coming verses that we did not read this morning, Luke tells us that while these two and the eleven and others were assembled in that house, that Jesus appeared to the group as a whole and spoke to them. The group, the body as a whole then, experienced the presence of the risen Jesus Christ. But here's the thought that kept the little hamsters on the wheels in my mind busy this week. As I was reading this scripture and as I was preparing for our time together today, I was thinking, now after Jesus appeared to everybody in that house, and these two individuals, one of them being Cleopas, the other unnamed, after Jesus has appeared to them, they then left Jerusalem, certainly, and headed home to Emmaus a second time. They headed home to Emmaus a second time. And the thought that kept the little hamsters busy this week was this. I wonder 
what they were discussing on the way home the second time. Now what were they talking about? And more importantly, the thought I had was, I wonder, I wonder if they broke out in song. I wonder if they broke out in a fight song. I wonder if they began to sing a victory song. I wonder on the way home and in days to come, did they sing a song that inspired them, encouraged them, reminded them that they had seen the risen Christ? I can't help but wonder if some of our songs of faith today, like the one that we sang this morning, He Lives, if there is any possibility that we could trace the origin of that song back to those two individuals walking to Emmaus. I wonder as they walked along that road, did they begin to sing a song like, He lives, He lives, He has walked with us, He has talked with us. He lives. And in the days and weeks and months ahead, when they faced challenges, when they faced difficulty, when they had anxieties, when they had fears, when they had opportunities to serve the kingdom of God that seemed maybe overwhelming to them, I wonder, did they sing a fight song? Like, we can do this, we can persevere, we can overcome because we have seen the risen Christ we know he lives. He has walked with us. He has talked with us. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. I wonder if they sang a fight song, a victory song, to encourage them and remind them of the goodness and the presence of God with them each day. This morning, we heard Ryan sing and play the Battle Hymn of the Republic. And I invite you to travel back in time with me and remember. Remember that the battle hymn of the Republic has its origin during the time of the Civil War. But that's not the only time in our nation's history where that song has played a prominent role. Remember with me as citizens of this great land those dreadful days that began with September 11th, 2001. September 11th, 2001, when the terrorists launched their attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. We were a nation gripped with fear and anxiety. A short time after those tragic events, there was a service of prayer and remembrance that was held at the Washington National Cathedral. A time of prayer and remembrance where many gathered together. Many of our great leaders were present, and they shared messages and sermons, including the late great Reverend Billy Graham. And after they had shared their, their sermons and their testimony and their faith together, all those that were assembled together, they sang the Battle Hymn of the Republic. It served as a signal that this nation, one nation under God, would persevere. That this nation would move forward. The Battle Hymn of the Republic at that service seemed to serve as a fight song for our country. The Battle Hymn of the Republic, one of the great songs of our nation's history that remind us, along with others, of how blessed we are in the United States of America. But that day at that service, it served as a fight song that we would persevere and we would get through this time together. And then, I was thinking about us, and I was wondering, 
Do you have a fight song of faith? Do you have a song where the words bubble up within you and resonate within you that serve as a fight song for your faith and our faith? Do you have a victory song that you like to sing that reminds you of the victory that is ours through Jesus Christ? When you have a challenge, a difficulty, when you face anxiety and or fear, do you have a song that serves as your fight song of faith? I'm going to ask Renee to show on your screen my email addresses. And as you have that email address on the screen before you, I invite you right now, send me an email at one of those two shown email addresses. Tell me, what is your fight song of faith? What is your victory song of faith? What is the song that inspires you and encourages you in times of challenge or difficulty or fear? What is your fight song of faith? Send me that email now. I have my cell phone, and I will be able to pull some of those up. But while I wait for those emails to roll in, hopefully, I'm going to ask Carla and Jeff and Renee, the only three present this morning who can actually speak, I'm going to ask them, what is your fight song of faith? And I want you to hear what songs they lift up as you send in your emails. So, Carla, step over to the microphone. Share with us, please. What is a fight song of faith for you? As I gave it some thought this week, you suggested, uh, I played two of them this morning, Love Lifted Me and Blessed Assurance. Love Lifted Me mm -hmm. and Blessed Assurance. And Blessed Assurance. I played the both of them. They were in my book just right in line, as they should have been. Mm. Those Thank are my fight songs. Thank you. As those email addresses appear again on the screen, since we can't see Jeff and Renee up in the balcony, as those email addresses appear there, and it's good that you can look at that screen with those email addresses because I have a face designed for radio. But Renee, I want to ask you, what is a fight song of faith for you? Well, this is one that came to me when I first came down with rheumatoid arthritis. And I play it a lot for the youth group kids, and they have no idea why. But it's Overcomer, Overcomer by Mandissa. Overcometh? Overcomer. Okay. All right, thank you. Jeff, what is a fight song of faith for you? Currently in conditions, I need thee every hour is a... We need thee every hour. Comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah, those are good songs. So I'm going to pull out my cell phone, and I'm going to hopefully pull up some emails that I have received here in the last minute or so. I may not be able to share them all, but hopefully I have a couple that I can share with you. Fight songs of faith that inspire us. So um, here are some that I have received. Um, Teresa Davis emails me and says, Jesus loves me and amazing grace. Yeah, those are good fight songs of faith. Claudia Stevenson, she said, Jesus loves me. And Brian said, amazing grace. Oh, <laughs> I have a song from... Beverly Schroeder, and she said, Onward, Christian Soldiers. And that speaks very revelantly to today's times. Uh, an email from Megan, uh, not in our hymnal, but a great song, I Lift My Hands by Chris Tonkin. Another great song. Um, from Rachel in West Des Moines. Sounds familiar. Victory in Jesus, number 370. Yeah, that's a great song. Uh, 
Then I have, um, let's see, what's another? Um, Janice Samuelson, and she says that her children used the song, Jesus Loves Me, as their fight song. Uh, Jim Persinger says, How Great Thou Art is a fight song of faith for him. Um, Jim and Leanne Ayers say, It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. That's a good fight song as well. Jen Topai says, Hymn of Promise, number 707 in our hymnal, and an old classic, Old Rugged Cross. Those are great fight songs. Um, let's see if I have any others. Uh, from Mary and Larry Cumming in Lincoln, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Excellent. Richard Johnson says, Lift High the Cross. Another great fight song. I would love to be able to share all of these emails that are rolling in, but due to the time constraints and my knowledge that there is maybe one individual who takes the opportunity to remind me to keep it brief, and he usually sits over in this section, I'm not going to be able to share them all, but I hope you have a song of faith, a fight song that inspires you, and it is good that we have all these songs that we can share together. Like, he lives for that.